This time on Graveyard Cars. Mark finishes decals and emblems for the 72 Charger. I got pretty crazy with the graphics in 72. Mark starts renovations on the new home of Graveyard Cars. This area in here is going to be the Graveyard Cars Diner. But will he get carried away? First off, it's none of your business. Seriously? We finish the motor for the Walton 72 Charger. Derek knocks out the K-member, and we team up to put it all back together in the Top Banana Beast, as long as nothing goes wrong. You son of a- You have a gun. On this episode of Graveyard Cars. Got that car coming to get you, I'm Mark Warman, and together with the most critical man in the world, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! My son-in-law, Josh. Oh, yeah! And my best friend, Roy. Well, all right. We bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born, if we don't kill each other. There. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. What kind of creepy shit is that? Why are you here and why are you? Well, I'm just looking through the AMD catalog. Yeah, I don't want to store down my day What's looking wrong? at that. What's wrong? What can I do for you, sir? Well, I, you told me to go ahead and get ready to order some AMD parts for my car, so I'm wanting to do it today. I'm trying to get an early start <laughs> and write them down and go for it. I told you, you gotta let me know on stuff. This is for your car? You, you know, we got budgets, we got obligations and responsibilities. You can't just, to be honest, you probably need $10,000 worth of parts, but this might not be. So you know, when is all I'm, I'm not I, saying I, no, I'm not saying I've never oh stop for a second. Well, there's a whole so what day is today? The second? Today's the today's the second. What's your point? So what day do I gotta come forth with, with well, the parts for the budget? Well, Everything would be good for the budget. The first would be nice. Yesterday would have been good. Yeah. Okay, so if I come at you next month before the yeah, first or something. As long as we have a similar month, I mean that date fluctuates. Okay. I I'll go along with that, okay? I understand bills and things. There there's no Mayan team. You mean I, a, not my. There's, there's a my in meat pie, and the acronym of meat pie, I don't know. Is there a my or an I in Mark? Recently, I was able to make a deal on a building that is going to be perfect for graveyard cars to be able to grow into the assembly line type of restoration shop that I want it to be. I brought the guys over to take a look at the progress that we've done so far. Going to have a, uh, an entryway into here that comes in three feet, and then it'll cut across six feet and then go back in three feet. The electricians have been in, pulling wire, demoing out old stuff. Basically, we've cleaned the inside of the shop, and uh, I wanted to show the guys that I'm serious. This area in oh. here is going to be the Graveyard Cars Diner with two full L-shaped booths here. Don't be your sake, they we serve salad, in. Darren. Yeah, that's the first fat joke Darren. you said today. Darren. Hey, everybody, I'm going to be here all week. I'm going to be telling what Mark he needs to eat a salad once in a while. Anyway, let's get back to how miserable I am. I hope that I'm not the only one that is as excited as I am because I see the potential. We're just buried at the other shop. We don't have any room to move around. Over here, we've got space. We've got room. We've got square footage. We've got a parking lot that'll hold two and a half acres of cars. It's all blacktop. It's already got the drainage in. We don't have real deep pockets, and so I can't go out and build a brand new building. If I could, I know I would tailor make it the way we need it. But this is an older building that we can afford, and just like our cars, we can fix it up a little bit at a time and make it what we need it to be. It should really save on the cost of doing the restorations because the more cars that you can do, Henry Ford proved this, in less amount of time, you can do for less money. Right along here is gonna be our shop crane. Yeah. So that'll be able, we'll have this up against the, close to that wall over there so that we can just lift the engines up and set them there, set the transmissions on there, set the K-members on there with yeah. that piece of equipment. It's productivity. That's where I think this is gonna end us up at. Again, I hope everybody else is enjoying the idea of our expansion as much as I am because it's, it's a pretty neat time for us right now. Time is starting to run out on the 72 Charger delivery date. Uh, the Waltons are gonna be here to pick it up, and we need to really light a fire under everybody and do as much multitasking as possible to get that car done on time. So I'm installing the, uh, the decals that go in the rally doors on the Dodge Charger in 72. 71, they ran horizontally. There were only two of them. But in uh, 72, they went to this. They got pretty crazy with the graphics in 72. 
These are a little meticulous. There's a few of them. There's five on each door, so it takes some time. Can't be in too big a hurry. We got this car in just a little over a year ago. We had to replace the roof skin. It's been stripped, painted inside and out. The original numbers matching engine is completely rebuilt. And now I'm finishing the graphics because this is the next car to be delivered at Graveyard Cars. So I'm putting a piece of tape right here on this line to show the very center line of the lock cylinder because this has a lock cylinder cut out in it. But when it's on there, you can't really see it. Now we're going to take this bad boy, flip her over. Line up that mark right there, lay it down, line up the outer edges. Got to come down a little bit here in the middle. So one thing not to get discouraged about when you're doing decals, especially on something, a plane like this, that has such a reverse curve, you see that? And the decal has to follow that reverse curve but like if you look at the beginning of this, I have a few air bubbles in there. There's one right there. Now, if you can, if you can walk it up to the edge, just get it past that opening. This is where you make it or break it. Just walk it slow, walk it slow. Come on, baby. There it went. And now your air bubble's gone. These reverse curves hold it the worst. If you try to do this while everything's wet, it's just gonna keep popping back on you. So that's why I let it set long enough for all the soap, all the application gels, everything to evaporate out. I just finished building the long block out for uh, Mitzi and Jim's 72 Dodge Charger. All I've got left now are just the bolt-on things, the intake manifold, exhaust manifolds, timing cover, water pump. I gotta put the dipstick tube in it and the oil pan and the oil pump. Then it's all done. I can move it out to the booth, get it cleaned up, prepped, spray it with the DP90, which is our epoxy sealer, and then spray the corporate blue over the top of that. It's Mark, Derek, and myself who are doing all these things. And, you know, I, I think we're doing good as far as working together as a team, but as far as getting uh, these guys' 72 Charger done, there's so much more work to do. It's insane. None of us have slept. I think we all get maybe five hours of sleep, you know, because we're here all evening trying to get stuff prepared for the next day. We, we're such a crunch for time that we're pushing a little faster than we normally do, but I've only got three weeks to finish the car, and uh, that's just the way it is. The sooner that my heart can explode inside my body, the happier he'll be. Can you start taking those apart, or is Royal going to do all the is work that like he always budget? does? It's like jewelry. Wow. While the turd man of Alcatraz has been torturing me about the budget and ordering parts for his car, I still managed to get the 318 put together for the Walton's charger and all the decals installed. Now we have to move the charger inside the assembly room for the heater and air conditioning components to be installed. So then the only parts I'm actually gonna need right away is the ones for the bumper for the charger. Hang on one second. Squirrel turd, one second. Hang on, squirrel turd. Okay, the 72 charger for Jim and Mitzi needs to be moved into the assembly room. Okay. But in an hour, I'd like to see the yellow car inside there so that we can start assembling it. Sorry about the long turd thing. Oh no, I called you a squirrel turd. Yeah, you called me a squirrel turd. Sorry about that. It's okay, it's okay. Squirrel turd. I had that one on the way to work the other day. I thought it had a nice cadence to it. So unfortunately, we're at a stopping point right now with Mark and Elena's 1970 Cuda. We received the parts, finally, for the Walton's 1972 top banana charger. We're going to wheel out Mark and Elena's Cuda and then wheel in the Walton's 1972 charger. Uh, now that we've got the 72 Charger Rally in the assembly room and we have our heater box and our air conditioning system back from Classic Auto Air, they do all of our restorations now on those components, we're ready to install them in the car. So have you seen some of this stuff yet, Royal? Just that box while it was when it was open. So I was looking earlier. So some of these, we can get these on too if we can find the, the apparatus Here. that holds it in place. That's the receiver dryer. Hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> you know, it seems to be that more and more lately we're getting along a little bit better, the guys are. I mean, I'm I'm trying to back up on them a little bit and not hammer them so hard with putting them down, keeping them down, holding them down, beating them down. Um, and it seems to be working a little bit, which is opposite of what I thought. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs>
Darren still throws curveballs, for example, today when he knew darn good and well we were going to be working on the 72 Charger, he went and had his eyes dilated to the size of the moon. And instead of just coming in and saying, hey, Mark, I can't work, instead he's ready to go to work and he's got the goofiest looking, most <laughs> looking glasses that they had at the optometrist. If you lift them up, you better have dilated Hollywood. eyes, because otherwise... I have a doctor's excuse right here. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Let me so see him again. We we're going to put this together. Why didn't you schedule it earlier in the day? Holy Dude, look, this one's bigger than that. No, one. I know. Everything about him's crooked. As you know, I'm a team player. After my doctor's appointment, I came back to GYC because that's what kind of person I really am. Whoa. I got a doctor's <laughs> note, though. You need it? No, I don't need it. <laughs> Can we put the heater box in this car? Heater control? Can you read it? <laughs> Darren has eye problems. Please excuse him from work today. Signed, Darren's doctor. You know, Darren does these things just to boil my blood. That's his goal. And the sooner that my heart can explode inside my body, the happier he'll be, which is sick. That's, that's my point. That dude is sick. Even with dilated eyes, I'm more help than Royal and Josh are together. This is the first air conditioning job we've ever done uh, that we've sent the stuff off to Classic Auto Air. And boy, I can tell you, I am really glad we did. But I'm just amazed. Look at the plating. Look at the pieces. It's just like, it's like jewelry. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Wow. That's the original heater box. Wow. Restored. Look at the fittings. They got the firewall installation pad in place already, so you know where it goes, right? Wow. New valves or new uh They reconditioned actuator. everything. They either replaced it or reconditioned it. Absolutely phenomenal. Let's get that in the car before something stupid happens to it. I'm on my toolbox over there. How are we looking, fellas? Beautiful. Now up a hair, Josh. Perfect, thank you. Sure it's a lot easier to do this with the dash yeah. out. You got my electric ratchet and a 7 16 and a short extension. these are points, it looks like. And that seems weird. Would you mind if I took a second to go look at some photographs? Meanwhile, while I'm you looking- tell me where the book is, I'll get it. Is that blue one right no, there? No, I have to oh. look at pictures on my computer of the it's car before oil. it came apart. Is it that blue book right there, that Mopar catalog? Nobody listens. No. It's He's not got them on in those books. It's in my computer in my office. You take a lot of pictures? I did. Never take enough, though. You think you did, but you didn't. So we got this. We need to find that strap and that bracket and then that other one back there. That and that in the other boxes. Okay, let's go check that other box. We're missing a bunch of brackets to put this stuff together. So there I either did some didn't, brackets in this box. Let me finish. I either didn't turn it in with all the stuff or it's out here in one of these boxes. That's my thought. I think these are the brackets. That's the bracket. Oh, oh that's probably well, how did I miss that? Part of that? Yeah. I don't know. Now that we have all the under dash stuff installed in the 72 Dodge Charger, such as the evaporator core and case and heater core, we can start plumbing out the rest of the air conditioning parts. Again, these are the freshly restored components that we got from Classic Auto Air. Uh, everything looks like it's ready to go together, so that's what we're doing now. Oh no. I wanna mock, I'm gonna do this like exhaust. I'm gonna mock everything into place. Why is what? this trying to slip up my ass? Why do I, why is something Why would bad? I want a, a, a banana yellow bolt me. up my ass? Why would you want anything up there? I don't want anything up my ass. Don't wait on the car. He's not very bright. The parts from Classic Auto Air, I, I've never had them do one before. I had them do this one in Kimberly Cooks. It looks brand new. It looks far better than anything we could have done. Every line has been reconditioned. Every pipe has been replated. Every component looks exactly like it would have in 1972, which means it's probably gonna function exactly the same way when we fire up the AC. That looks brand new. Let's go work on some other parts, guys. Looks good, very good. What was the first year that Chrysler introduced the Plymouth Cuda? Was it 1964 and a half, 1968, or 1969? The answer coming up after the break. So what year did Chrysler officially introduce the Plymouth Cuda? The answer is 1969. They introduced the Plymouth Barracuda on the Valiant body in 1964 and a half. It adopted the name Cuda shortly thereafter, but Plymouth didn't officially have a Cuda model until mid-year 1969. It was available with the 340, the 383, and the 440. 
Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. Darren thought it would be funny to have his eyes dilated to a point where he could not be of any help to anyone. We got the freshly restored heater and air conditioning system installed in the 72 Charger. And D-Rock has been keeping us on task with the 1971 CUDA 344 speed car. So while I'm burning daylight trying to get the 72 Charger done, uh, it's great that I have somebody like Derek that I can give responsibilities to, like painting the shaker and the grill for the 71 340 CUDA. I know I don't have to babysit him. I know when he's done with it, it's going to be perfect. And I can give him 100 tasks like that, and he'll get all 100 of them done in whatever time frame I give him. So we're getting ready to put our color on, our grill for our 71 CUDA. It's Tor Red. Got the grill all done, baked it, and moved it out of the booth. So now we're going to mix up some sealer for our shaker scoop, get it sealed and color coated, and finish our grill insert colors. The shakers are awesome. the grill this morning, we did the shaker this afternoon, now we're putting our dark argent on the inner parts of the grill for our accent color and we're about all done. Pieces of chrome, she'll be looking sweet. But I want two different workstations so we can put all of the components that came out of the front bumper. Remember, Derek disassembled the front bumpers. They're down at the chromer waiting for them to come back. Right. I want the pieces detailed and ready to go into them. Those are intricate. There's a lot of stuff. Today we're putting together the front and the rear bumper assemblies on the 72 Charger for Jim and Mitzi. Every piece needs to be detailed, every piece needs to have the correct finish on it, and it all needs to go together exactly the way it came apart. Yeah, you be, oh, you're flinching, yeah. I did, man, I yeah. did, you know why, you caught me because in the Because I'm a screaming Italian tank, I'm a 220 pound screaming Italian tank. I'm if I decide spartan. I'm gonna run over the top of you, there's gonna be nothing left yet. Just a pile of dooski on the ground. What I got is a cup full of muriatic acid and I take the old original emblems and you just submerge in it. The muriatic acid will clean that chrome, like brand new. Hey, do you guys know what we're looking for? Piece of plywood? Yeah, two pieces, big, long ones. These are original emblems that they're not reproducing. Pot metal is only meant to be chromed one time. So if the chrome's still in decent shape on it, save it if you can. Last summer, I had to cut those boxes up in order to put the dashes in to send off to instrument specialties for Mark. So what are you saying? We don't have any plywood, none. These had what they call shadow paint on them. Shadow paint is where all the recesses were black. A lot of people don't realize if that paint's gone now that it was painted. And so they just clean this thing up and if there weren't remnants of the black, they just put the emblem on it. That'll work. Don't even think about it. You throw another rock, I'm gonna hit you. Mark wants us to disassemble the 72 Charger bumpers, but we have no tables or benches. I guess they weren't in the budgets, so we went out back, we found a couple old hoods, we're gonna use those for benches, basically. Got any help with that? <laughs> so for example, very little remnants. There's just little areas, I think, up in the inside of the A, but otherwise you wouldn't know. Satin black the whole thing, and then once that's dry, I'll take some thinner and I'll wipe the top of the chrome off and that'll look pretty close to a brand new molding. Okay, all right. Hey, Mark, that bulb is like red and yellow. I don't really care if they're using a hood. I don't care what they're using for a table. It doesn't matter. I gave that battle up a long time ago. Mark. What can I do for you, buddy? Well, I want to know about the budget. Ever since Mark told me it's not the budget to replace the parts that he stole from my 70 Dodge Challenger RT, I've been watching everything he's bought, keeping a record, a log of it. I'm just doing that because I'm a team player and I don't want him to overspend. First off, it's none of your business. It's above well, your it pay grade. It is our business. It's all of our business. We're in this all together, remember? Can you start taking those apart or is Royal going to do all the is work like he always does? I'm out here for two seconds and Darren's starting in about the budget. 
It's not his business. That's why I'm the boss. That's why I'm in charge. You know, the budget is my business because Mark's made the budget my business. He sold my parts. Then he says he'll replace them. He never does. He says they're in the budget, they're in the budget, they're in the budget. I want to see the budget because I never get the parts. Bottom line, the budget is my business. So I'm going to take these in and paint them and I'll be back. Ow! 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 Idiots. Those are sharp. Yeah, they are. <laughs> The yeah, lenses I mean, look really good. These need to be a buff. You go finish the other housing, and Josh, you can start blasting these. Let's rock it out, baby. We're running out of time. Let's do it. Let's do it and do it. Let's stink it and drink it. Let's, let's, I don't know, what else? And I can roll it out, clean it down, mask a couple of ports off, and it's rid of the paint. Let's see what kind of golfer he'd make. Is he a hole-in-one? Oh, you he son of a... You have a gun. I called up Golf Car Services and got hold of Rob. When he pulled up today, rounded that corner, and there was that machine, I thought, yeah, once again, good vendors, good subs. Rob, how you doing? Gregor Dude, SS's. that is gorgeous. I'm Rob Walker, owner of Golf Car Services out of uh, Maple Valley, Washington. Tell me about this car that's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, we take a club car precedent chassis, cut it in half, add three feet into the middle, put heavy duty rear springs on the back. It has a 290cc Kawasaki, and we put disc brakes up front. Oh, nice. I oh, cool. hope he drives better, this better than he does his car. Oh, this is sweet. Oh, you can run right out here and grab the parts? Yep. This will be great to drive down to the store to get snacks. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect for around here. I'm here today because Mark reached out to me for their new shop. It's two and a half acres. They needed a vehicle that they could access the lot quicker and be more efficient with their time. This go-kart is way cool. I like the wink mirror up on top. It's, it's comfortable to sit in, it rides nice. It's got two glove boxes, it's got a top on it. I love the go-kart, it's fun to ride in. I can't wait to drive it. We really didn't need it. We should have got something again like a utility vehicle with a box in the back that we could have put tools oh, I'll be getting and one parts of those and too. stuff in. You get one of those too. You did really? Yeah, so. Seriously? <laughs> don't run over people now, honestly, Mark. Don't do stupid stuff. Anyway, I just don't see where it's going to be useful around here. We got renovations going on at the new shop, a ton of work here at the current shop, and Darren running around torturing me about a budget. But we still got parts cleaned, detailed, and painted, decals installed, the engine built, and heating and air conditioning components installed in the car. We also got a fun new tool from our friends at Golf Car Services. But if we're going to stay on task for the Charger, we need to get the front suspension disassembled, cleaned, blasted, reassembled, and ready to go back in the car. Well, for now, I'm working on the 72 Charger K member, trying to get all of that suspension stuff ripped apart, be blasted, painted the correct colors, then start reassembling. And I'm supposed to be working on Cook's rear differential and getting that all set up. I'm well, just bouncing around mainly because, yeah, we got s multiple cars that are all supposed to be done at the same time. For now, I'm on this. 20 minutes from now, who knows? Nobody but Mark knows that. Keeping the OE style parts sometimes is a hassle when you're, uh, a lot of your aftermarket urethane stuff goes in way easier. And it does add a lot of extra time, but you know, that's why we're backed up, but then again, back to originals, what they want. Well, cool, yeah, this one came apart nice. Didn't have to fight it, so that one came apart. Now we'll take these bad boys to our bad boy blaster. Okay, now that we got these bad boys all media blasted, we are gonna mask them off roughly down the center of your rivets because from the factory, they were actually dipped in Cosmoline off to the booth.
Uh, I took the guys over to the new shop. There's a lot of organizing, even though we're not ready to move in, there's lots of organizational things that can be done. Unfortunately, they can't just focus on the tasks that I give them. Their job is to put me down, beat me down, hold me down, put me down, keep me down, and, and make me feel you know, like less of a person. And my only real problem with that is, I don't like the kind of person that has to put somebody else down to make themselves feel better. I think that's sick. I'm gonna do the flashing here. Then on the inside, we got all new lifts going in. New lifts out on the covered awning area, right? The offices all get painted and rewired. Uh, Susie's got her little merchandise store that she's working on downstairs. We'll have the full kitchen. We'll have the theater. What about the budget? Are those in the budget? Actually, <laughs> thank you for asking. Those were in the budget. Why? Then the actual diner. So we can't yeah, have we a don't place need to hang out. Theater. No, because I'm tired of you guys taking off for two hours for lunch and nothing gets done. Why do you get so excited? You're going to stay here. It's going to be like school. You're not leaving campus. We get recess? You're going to punch in at 8 in the like morning. You're going to punch out. No, no. I it's like a prison. prison. A lot more like school. It's a prison. No, a lot like more it. like school, buddy. I don't think you need yeah, to spend like the school. money on the building. You know school you was a leave. prison. You the know building, how you can't. Oh, wait, you wouldn't know. You didn't the go. The building is fine. The paint is fine. It's just a building to do the cars inside. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares what the building looks like, do they? That is awesome, man. No, I'll pick it up. I ain't waiting. Think about that. How does that make you feel? So cool, dude. Sorry. We need to load up the trailer. I just, uh, Got a new, uh, got a Dodge coming in. I just hustled a deal. Another We've car. Got enough cars. Uh, getting ready to head up north here, about an hour from here to pick up a car. I've uh, been working on the deal for a little while. It just came through. Um, it's cool. It's a Challenger. It's a Hemi. I mean, yeah, they didn't build very many of them. It's plum crazy. I know Darren's going to go crazy over the color and everything. Um, but this is what we do, you know. I mean, while a lot of people jump up and down and get crazy and, and jacked out of their minds, thinking, "Oh, I got to have it," you know, it's just business. I'm the duck going across the pond, okay? My little head's just still as that, but underneath it, my little feet is doing this. See, but you don't ever see my little feet, okay? Because it's about your head above the water and the duck and keeping it still. That's where the, that's where the magic happens. Now the car, we've already got enough cars to do already, don't you think? Does it go sideways? It doesn't, right? Shut up. Automatic or manual? Up uh, further. Super, super track pack. Up further, uh, right there is good. Stripe? A striped elite car. Color interior. Black, leather. Uh, numbers, everything? Numbers everywhere. Pretty much stock? N96, which you know is optional. Shaker. Shaker hood, huh? Optional on all challengers. Can we go? Yeah. You're right, go. You guys, you guys. Right. No, no, no. Let's go. On, dude. No, 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 hey. no, get out. OK, you go right in. You go right in. He's a lot faster than I am. He looks like a clown in there. We need to talk to the circus, see if they're missing one of their performers. We must just pulled around the corner right here and playing games with me or something. They're gone. They went my ride. How am I supposed to get back to the shop? I can get those guys, Mark and Josh. I don't know what they're even thinking of. This is not really very nice. Chrysler radically redesigned the Dodge Charger for the new 1971 model year. True or false, the nickname given to the sleek new body design was the Coke bottle. The answer coming up after the break. Did the 1971 Dodge Charger adopt the nickname the Coke bottle? The answer is true. If you were to take a camera and go straight up in the air and look down on the car, you would see that it has the same curves as a Coke bottle. And that's why it was referred to as the Coke bottle body. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. We've been full throttle on the 72 Charger as well as working on the renovation and slowly moving stuff into the new building. To add to the crazy list of things that needed done, Josh and I had to take the Intech trailer up north and pick up a Hemi Challenger factory shaker plum crazy car. You know, Mark's supposed to go here to shop. I don't know why. Do you know why, Ronald? Nope. So we're just trying to have a little bit of fun while we're waiting. Are you getting dizzy? You gonna throw up yet? Not yet, bud. That's not his, I hope, right? You got a Challenger? <laughs> wow. I'm saying. You're just saying what? I told you it was a Hemi Challenger. 
Darren, this got a shaker hood like your car. Mine does never shaker. <laughs> uh, just got back from across town picking up my new Challenger 2014 Challenger Shaker RT. Plum crazy. It's a Hemi and it is a shaker. It does have black leather and it is a super trackback car. One of the first things I wanted to do was get the windows tinted, so I stopped by and saw Tristan over at Trifer. He did a beautiful job. Well, I've been tinting cars for Mark for a couple years now. Uh, we also do the windshields for when he does restorations at his shop. I think Mark got the purple one to jab Darren a little bit. Mark says little things for my car are not in the budget, but yet he goes and gets a brand new Challenger. So now that weird evil laugh he's got, that's what he did to me when I first saw the car. <laughs> The only reason Mark got that new Challenger is because I have a 1970 Challenger RT that's pumped crazy. So what's Mark do? Not only does he get a new Challenger RT, but he gets a purple Challenger RT like mine. This is a 1970. So now he wants to take the black stripes off the car and put white stripes on it so it looks more like my car, grab the salt more into my wounds. There's similarities between the car, but I mean, you think I'm so sick? <laughs> He's just a devious individual. There's no hope for him. I'm that whack, I'm that nuts, that, that I get a little charge, a little thrill, a little something, something. It, it, yeah, I like that, you know, I do. I, I enjoy that, um, but I'm not sick. I think uh, Dodge did a great job bringing the new Challenger back. I think Mark did a better job, though, of getting the Challenger in the budget. Budget? I think that's where the budget went, is a Challenger. It's transportation expenses, all right? Anything Mark wants is in the budget. Anything we want is not in the budget. I got room for one human being, and the canines have to stay behind. Who, who's riding with me? Chrome? <laughs> I think it's happened to me again. Remember when you left me here the other time? Saddle up, Pilgrim. Let's rock. I gave the K-member and front suspension for the 72 Charger to Derek. Once again, he's doing a beautiful job on it. He does what he's supposed to do. He knows what the finishes are. He gets in the books. He looks. Uh, we take a lot of credit at Graveyard Cars because we're in front of the cameras. We take a lot of credit for all the finished products. But without the body men, without the painters, without the guys behind the scenes, the truth is uh, we could do it, but we'd never be able to put out more than one a year, where now we're putting out four or five a year. Start with the steering box and... Uh work our way in control arms and around, so. Over the years, yeah, I've probably done dozens of these things. They're pretty basic as far as n normal assembly. You just gotta put everything in, in your order before you start tightening stuff up. Well, since we're waiting on a few parts, we're done for now and uh, give it to Mark and the guys to finish up and I'll go do something else. I was very fortunate because I was able to get uh, what I consider to be a basic, uh, you know, utilitarian transportation vehicle that would happen to fit the budget. Uh, I could have drove the Jaredown rollback, I could have drove the van, uh, but they get terrible gas mileage. I, I drive a Ford Focus station wagon. It's fuel efficient and it's definitely within my budget. My point was to look out for the company, uh, try to save some money down the road. You know, that's just a minuscule task that I had to do and get done. Now I can get back on painting the engine for the 72 Charger. All right, so where I'm at now is the motor's basically put together. I just gotta put the water pump and the harmonic balancer on it, and then I can roll it out, clean it down, mask a couple of ports off, and it's ready to paint. When you're non-high performance, like this is just a 318 two-barrel, um, it doesn't go the Hemi Orange. Typically, every engine you see us paint out there in the paint shop is Hemi Orange, but this one actually goes the corporate blue. So right now, I just finished doing the DP90. I'm gonna give it about 20 minutes, half hour to cure out good. It's setting at about 100 degrees right now. While that's happening, I'm gonna clean my gun, mix up the corporate blue, put the paint in the cup, and go back in and top coat it. Chrysler started introducing that corporate blue in 1970 on the 318. Uh, I think that their goal was, as soon as they could, paint all the engines the same color. It would save money over painting one, like in the 60s, turquoise, another one red, another one hemi orange. So in 70, the 318, uh, two barrel, which is the only way it came, was the corporate blue, and the low performance 440 and 383 were corporate blue. The high performance engines still in 1970 and 1971 were Hemi Orange. What ended up happening was by 1972, all engines were blue. And that square block on each side goes into a recess built into the actual converter itself. Hi, John. This is Mark at Graveyard Cars. Just jack the damn thing up! 
while I tried to help the Dunganous crab figure out how a transportation budget really works. D-Rock got the work done on the front suspension for the 72 Charger, and I got the engine painted corporate blue. And we're ready to rock to the next step. I think we're gonna have a good day today at Graveyard Cars. The 318 is painted corporate blue and ready to go on to the K-member and the stand. Uh, our goal today is to get the motor put onto the stand, build it out as much as we can with the parts that we have, and reunite it with the 72 Charger. Today will probably go about the same as any other day. Mark and Darren will fight. I'm trying to get stuff done. Darren, why do you it's do this? Have pressure. you ever seen any time we do an operation, you're that guy that repeats it a thousand times? You just told everybody... Royal twice with the, the gun or whatever it was. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. We can run it back. You told him twice. I'm trying to get the motor on the K-member. I can survive them. It'll be fine. I really don't know how today is going to go after yesterday because Mark got caught in one of these big fat lies. I think that's where the budget went is a challenger. Anything Mark wants is in the budget. Anything we want is not in the budget. That's the old saying, how do you know when Mark is lying? His lips are moving. A budget for parts is different than a budget for transportation. I've never seen the budget, let alone something for the new challenger in the budget. You can go into any, any bookkeeper's log and you'll see transportation expenses, parts expenses, sublet expenses. So he, uh, you know, is bookkeeper. Every time I think of the new Challenger, all I think of is Mark and that rat-faced grin he has. You know, where his teeth buck out and the drool's coming down his face and all that kind of stuff, you know. You know, a rat looks at you like this, you know. They just jump on you. Well, that's what I think every time I see the car. Because Mark is a big, fat rat. And a liar. So what Royal's doing right now is putting the flex plate on. The flex plate is what couples the torque converter to the engine itself. What the flex plate does is it bolts to the crankshaft and then it bolts to the torque converter and the transmission, which spins the pump in the transmission. Hang on, Lurch, hang on. Look at that big old muscle guy doing that. So Easy, buddy. Okay, get hard. You were gonna Let me teach you now. something. You, okay, set her down if you don't mind. Again, there's a pattern to them, so the bolts, you have to line up. The hole that's in that flex plate right there, you're gonna wanna put that opposite of the hole, the drain plug. That okay. way you know that they're lined up. But most importantly, because you can figure that out once it's in the car, it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Most important part is the pump that's inside here has a pair of teeth in it one on each side, uh, uh, just a square block. And that square block on each side goes into a recess built into the actual converter itself. Okay. Okay, so it's easy just to set it up there and if they're not engaged and you go to marry this together, mm. you'll bolt the transmission down, this will hit the flex plate and it'll actually bust the front pump. Oh wow. So this has to be in all the way and how you know it's in all the way, I know by looking at it, but it's still a good idea. Right there, you can just barely hear those teeth clicking against each other like that okay. okay now you're all the way in so now it's ready to go on but if you lift that up like you did a minute ago with that caveman horse crap and you tip it forward that converter is going to fall out mm. so now the only thing we got left to do as far as marrying them together is get it up against the actual bell housing itself and make sure that our hole in the flex plate is opposite of our drain hole oh inspection cover got to go on first what cover it goes over all this oh you know what we forgot where's the shield the great thing about having Darren around is he's very much like a fly that finds dung. He finds mistakes, okay? He finds my mistakes. In the case of the 72 Charger, we were putting it together, mating the transmission up to the engine without the stone shield in place. So that would have been a real bear to do once it was inside the car. One of my better attributes is finding fault and mistakes as the others have made here at GYC. I guess that's actually a good thing because without me, these mistakes would go unnoticed and the cars would be put together wrong. Mark, is this the only thing? That is it, yes. Okay. So now I'm cleaning up the inspection plate cover for the 318 motor. Get it back to the guys, get it installed, and uh, get this thing installed in the car. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised how easy it went in. That's because I prepared everything. Here at GYC, we try to do everything like the factory did. That's why we put the engine and transmissions in from the bottom. It just makes it a lot nicer. You're not laying over the fenders and whatnot, scratching up freshly painted metal. Keep shaking it, boss. You're looking good. Let's see what kind of golfer he'd make. Is he a hole in one? Looks you good. Should, you should work all night on About this. About six inches. Beautiful. Look at that by hand. Okay, this side needs to go back a little. Yeah, I got it, Rolo. Okay, we're in. Okay. You know, I've got a bad hip. If you want me to get up and kick your liver inside out and kick it in your organs, I will. <laughs> got a bad, bad hip? Bad hip, Grandpa? This is a f***ing guy who armor rolls his head. You know how to get along better, man. I know, Mark. I tried. 
If you go down too far, you'll bust the distributor cap into the firewall and destroy everything. I know. So we have to put the transmission cross member in now. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm working up. on. I got it. They're not idiots. They're not stupid. They're smart. They they work hard. They just everybody sees things differently. I want to put it in one way. They want to put it in another way. We're all basically the same idea. But all it takes is a is one guy with the idea. Well, I'm going to lower the car down. And say no. Just raise the transmission up, and then everybody's fighting. See, one of the things that you'll notice a lot is I'm trying to get along with people. He did. I had it all set together, and he couldn't wait to just to run off with it huh. like a wild ass hyena. No, Mark. You said you had it. I did, but they were all together till you separated them. No, this was there. That I'm trying to create a sense of peace. I'm more of a uh, an automotive Gandhi, I think, if you will. Badao. You were such an overreactor. Badao Gagu, na na. Give me the Gabu. So, just jack the damn thing up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Wow. You he son of a. Said. You have a gun. <gasps> Pistol, rifle, 22. No. Once we get the engine and the transmission installed in the car, we can start putting the peripheral things on, such as the upper control arms. We can start putting the cables on, the hoses, the lines, uh, the torsion bars. We can adjust those up. We can get the rest of the pieces bolted down and inspected um, and put all the linkage on. There's just a lot of things that can be done once that engine and transmission and rear end are in place. And now that we have all those things done, this car is that much closer to meeting our deadline and being a roller again. You know, we got a lot done this week on the 72 Charger. Basic drivetrain is in, under dash, air conditioning stuff from Classic Auto Air is in. I mean, we made a lot of ground up. There's a lot of work yet to be done on Walton's yellow 72 Dodge Charger. And I think the quality of the job is going to suffer if Mark rushes us. Probably one of the most important things, I think, was making sure that the budget issue got checked off this week. Yeah, it's, it's a new car for me, but that's not the point, you know? It's for everybody. I mean, nobody else can drive it, but it's for morale. And that's Mark for you. Hi, this is John with Automotive Direct. How can I help you? Hi, John. This is Mark at Graveyard Cars. Hi. Need to put in an order there, toilet bowl head. Excuse me? Isn't your name John? Yeah. Isn't that what they call a toilet? Oh. Okay, John. John Boy. 101-1000-325. Look what's in the budget now. Okay, Mark trusted me with the card. He gave it to me. How do you think I got it? Have him just set him out at will call and I'll send Darren down there. Go down to Napa and grab, there's like five things down there. Uh, along with it's gonna be some quarter inch fuel line. Okay, thanks. And don't take half an hour. It's five minutes there and five minutes back. It's nice to be in charge of the budget. Just put an order from AMD for my 1970 Challenger for $1,500. Revenge on Mark, priceless. Thanks, Mark. Next time on Graveyard Cars. We drive a mile in Mark's shoes and figure out what he does all day. <laughs> this is Haley Warman. Mark and Darren get a call to authenticate a 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. I can usually tell, it's what I do. While Derek Royal and I install the engine, transmission, and K member in Bob Moore's 1970 340 Cuda. Derek puts the finishing touches on the Superbird's paint, the bodymen finish hanging sheet metal, and Mark and I build out the engine for Kimberly Cook's 1970 Barracuda. On the next episode of Graveyard Cars.